Hello, I'm Mayor Skiff Hall, and welcome to my Council Conversation Show. We've all heard the phrase, never stop learning, because life never stops teaching. Well, here in Surprise, we are fortunate to have some great educational opportunities for people of all ages. Today, I'm going to introduce you to some of our local educational leaders from the Dysart Unified School District, Western Maricopa Education Center, or WESMEC, and Ottawa University, Arizona. Let's begin with our partners at Dysart celebrating their 100th anniversary this year. Please welcome School Board President Jay Leonard, Superintendent Dr. Quinn Kellis, and Assistant Superintendent Jim Dean. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Thank you, it's Thank an you. honor thanks to be here. Us. Dr. Kellis, what, what have you see as the biggest achievements over the last 100 years? And congratulations, by the way. Well, thank you for that. And 100 years, um, you know, we're still looking for that first alumni from uh, our first graduating class. But right. we are so thrilled to be able to celebrate 100 years, and it's been a, an extraordinary time. Um, some of the biggest celebrations is we started out with one school in Dysart Elementary School, which was in El Mirage. Today, we went from one to now we have 26 schools. Wow. And, uh, you know, it, it's just so fun to be leading a district that is growing. Right. Um, we are getting close to, to building a couple more elementary schools and even a high school because the growth and surprise keeps on going. Yep, it sure does. So what are some of the new things, Jimmy, that uh, the school district is, that you want to make the community aware of? You bet. Well, Mayor, we're happy to be here today and happy to talk about great things in Dysart. And one of the things that we have that we started this year is a new program called DSB Live. And DSB Live stands for Dysart Student Broadcasting Live. Oh, yeah. And that is a program in which our students are producing, broadcasting, and announcing our home high school athletic games. And we're very excited about that. Super. So far in the first two weeks of the season, after tonight's football games, we will have broadcast seven productions. Oh, wow. And again, those are completely student led. They are student produced. The students do all the camera work. They do all the production and they do the commentary as well. And we're we are providing that service for free to our parents and to our community. And that can be found at www.dysert.org slash DSB live. Oh, great, super. So I, I, I know you did a, you opened a new preschool over in West Surprise. I went to that opening and it was a fabulous building. And, uh, and then you uh, also did something I thought was really unique in that uh, traditional school on Parkview. Is that, go is that going well, Dr. Kellis? Or? Uh, well, Mayor, one of the things that we want to really focus on is being community driven. Yes. And the, the Surprise community does so much for our students and we want to do something to give back. One of those things is the Growing Minds Preschool. There's a great opportunity for um, quality childcare at preschool. This is our three-year-olds up to, up to four and five-year-olds where we have really, really nice facilities and, and great teachers for that. Yep. Um, but we also understand that people have different needs right. and to have choice in education is what education is about today. And so Dysford offers multiple choices, one of those being the Freedom Traditional Academy, which is kind of a back to basics. Mm -hmm. They have a, a strict discipline and they have uniforms. They are very much focused on, on the Constitution and the revolution, not the revolution, but the, the Americana type. Um, back to roots education. Right. So, um, kind of a 1776 approach. Exactly. That's <laughs> the, their their theme and <laughs> is r red, white, and blue. <laughs> yes. That's so we're great. we're happy to provide that as an option, and we have other options. Um, we're going to be starting middle schools here pretty quick, starting in August. Um, that hasn't been around in Dysert since oh, wow. Good. I don't know 30, 40 years, and so that gives another option for our families to choose from. To, uh, to go to a middle school or a K-8 school. Obviously, we still have the high schools, uh -huh. but we have a, an alternative high school. We have online high school through iSchool. It's That's all great. about meeting the needs of our community. Great. Well, I, I, I really appreciate your creativity, Dr. Thank Kellis, you. because before it was a little, it was, uh, it was okay. I mean, it was making improvements, but I think given the environment we're in where uh, kids are learning all kinds of ways, you have really picked up on that, and I think it's great. Um, Jay, thanks for what you do, and well, thank uh, you. tell us a little bit about what the what's what's the school board's responsibility. 
Well, it's, it's amazing because when I ran four years, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, but it's been an amazing four years. And the, the biggest part and the most important part of the school board is making the decision that sits to my left. Um, and that's bringing in a, a good quality superintendent who's a leader and who can see the vision of what the community needs mm -hmm. and is able to listen and partner. And I think that's one of the best things that, that we've done in the past four years is to bring Dr. Kellis on. Um, and just as you said, we've seen the growth as far as partnerships, people being willing to um, come in and actually volunteer and be a part of the Dysart um, School District because we're more open, um, we have more opportunities, and we're creative in the ways that we're, we're looking for volunteers. So right. if you have a little bit of time, we always welcome um, people to come into Dysart, and we, we really love to have um, the community come in and serve and be a part of, of our extraordinary experience. And you have five members on your board, Jay? Or we do. Five members, yep. and you meet monthly? We do. Yep. And it's an open meeting. Anybody an, can come to the meeting. Everybody's welcome. We, we invite the public. Um, we have time for public to come in and uh, to, to communicate with us and, and to share their feedback. And it's an opportunity for us to, to get our, our business done as well as hear from the community um, and share the things that we're doing. And as a matter of fact, I'd love uh, for the opportunity for you to come out and, and be a part of one of our meetings and, and come and uh, be our special guest. So if I'd you have to. an opportunity, okay. we'd love for you to come and just, just come and visit us. I, I appreciate the partnership that we have with the City of Surprise and, and all of your support. Great. Well, Jimmy, I for one are glad students are back in the classroom. Absolutely. You know, you know what I mean? I yes. mean, it's just, it's so important. Yes. And so what, what have been the challenges that you faced bringing kids back to this? Classroom? You know, Mary, it, it's been very important for us to bring our students back and to provide somewhat a, a, a sense of normalcy, um, you know, to all members of our community. What we have seen um, as, as we've opened our schools back physically to our students is that our students wanted to be back in school. Um, and we put various safety measures in place, mm -hmm. many of them. Mm -hmm. um, one including the fact that our students and all of our um, folks on our campuses wear masks. Okay. And what we found is that our students are willing to be compliant with those safety measures because they just want to stay in school. Right. And so they're not, they're not willing to do anything to risk not being able to be in school. And so it's been a great opportunity for us to, to provide some normalcy back to our students' lives, our teachers' lives, our administrators' lives, and our families as well. And I will tell you that it was absolutely awesome to watch our campuses light up again and to come back to life with yeah. our students. And so it's been a great, a great two, three weeks that we've had our students back in school and we look forward to a very successful school year. Yeah, great, that's great, Jimmy. So Dr. Kellis, I know, I know you're big about athletics and art and academics. I mean, I, I remember you coming to the city council meeting and talking about those three, three pillars. And, I, and the athletic piece, what, what's going on there with this COVID? Well, thank you. And the three A's are where we're putting all of our attention. So the academics, obviously, that's what we're all about. And athletics, we have a lot of kids who really love to come to school because they can participate in athletics. Right. So we're super excited because this week we're actually starting back with football. And with, uh, we've already been doing golf, we're in uh, swimming and some of the other sports. Obviously we're putting in place all of the safety protocols that are necessary for, for the COVID uh, situation, but um, we're limiting our, our fans, but we actually are allowing each player to bring a, a few of their um, family or guests. Um, okay. But it's limited and they're spread out. Sure. Again, all the safety protocols, but it's exciting to see them back on the field yeah. or on the court or, or wherever that they're participating. That's great. Um, and that really helps with their academics as well. Sure. When they're involved with the arts and they're involved with, that, with um, athletics, they're gonna be better students. Bet. You bet, I agree. So Jimmy, you, you mentioned the broadcasting and I, uh, you gave me the, uh, the introduction to Brian Yoder, which is, he just, he really is enthusiastic. <laughs> Very you know? enthusiastic. I mean, yes. really. And, and that's what it takes, doesn't it? To stand up a program? It does. You know, and, and Skip, we're fortunate to have great employees in our, in our school system who care passionately about what they're doing 
because it benefits kids. Yep. And and Brian is a good example of that. And and Brian is one who is driven to be very successful in building a program that is completely student centered. Yes. You know, and, and we're excited about that program. We're also bringing on sponsors. Um, you know, that are assisting um, in the way that that program is being funded. Okay. And um, so we're actively seeking those now. We we have just brought on a few, uh, but we continue to look for those. But but Brian Yoder is certainly instrumental in getting that process up and rolling. It's a brand new program for us. It's at all four of our high schools. And Skip, three, three weeks into the program, we have more than 75 students already really? actively involved in this program. Wow. And we just see this growing from here. Oh, and sure. so we're very excited about the opportunity, not only for our kids while they're in high school, but this is providing them tremendous training that they'll be able to utilize and move professionally into these endeavors in the future. That's great. And I know uh, Diane Arthur, our communications director for the city, has been in touch with Brian. Yes. Because there's probably some ways we can collaborate. Absolutely. Uh, you know? Absolutely. And uh, it's all about benefiting the residents' price, right? It is. <laughs> and, you know, and that's the great thing about that, Skip. The DSB Live program, it's a free service we're offering. It's not a paid subscription. So anyone can log on to our website and watch our events at no cost. And we believe that that's a very, very valuable asset to provide to our I community. I agree. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you very much, you guys, for your time today. And, uh, and I hope you've, you've enjoyed this discussion about Dysart School District. It's their 100th anniversary this year. So when we return, we'll get an update on the Vista Center for the Arts. Stay tuned. Welcome to Freedom Traditional Academy, a kindergarten through eighth grade school of choice where instruction is accelerated and learning is back to basics. We have students who have really been looking for this setting. I want a traditional school where it's focused on respect for self, respect for community, respect for others, and by that respect, I can gain my knowledge and be a responsible citizen for this community. Welcome back. We continue with Dice Art Schools on an update on the Vista Center for the Arts. Welcome John Williams. John, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Skip. So, you know, you went through all this work to stand up the, the center and then COVID hit. Yep, we had a busy weekend and uh, we hit the ground before we took off, so. So what's the, what's the update? What are, you, what are you working on? What do you see coming? Well, when? fortunately, we, ha we had shows that um, we have not canceled. Uh, we've rescheduled everything. Okay. And uh, at the time, the unknown, we had rescheduled for the fall. That's sure. been pushed off again. Um, so we, we have our programming um, set. We're, we're crossing our T's and dotting our I's right now. But okay. uh, December 5th, we will have a group coming out from Los Angeles, Ballet Folklorico. Um, a mariachi group and a dance group uh, that will be performing Christmas Eve in Mexico. Ooh, okay. um, they'll be doing a matinee and an evening show. Uh, the following weekend, we'll have uh, a slightly wicked holiday show, and uh, they're Broadway stars um, from the Broadway hit Wicked. Wow. Okay. Um, and they'll be coming out um, from New York and uh, performing a holiday show out here. So that we're, 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 we're following state guidelines, we're following so spacing and Correct. And all that. Uh, we're at half capacity. We're okay. at half capacity okay. right now. And so we're working with the artists um, and we're, we're formulating all of our, our guidelines, similar to all the guidelines, the safety guidelines that we have in place for the school district. And uh, we're, we're confident, we're confident that we're in a good place. We have a, we have a pretty full slate in the spring and, um, and we're, we're excited about some of the programming. Are the drifters coming back? The drifters are coming back. We, uh, <laughs> we rescheduled them, so they will be here in April. So um, they're back to basically their Excellent. original date one year later. All right. um, and so they will be here, yeah. And those Good. tickets are still on sale because we're, we're holding true to anybody that, that stayed with us that okay. purchased a ticket. Good. So how are you outreaching to the people in Surprise to update them? Are you just putting it on your website, Dice Art website? So they can go to uh, thevistaaz.com. Um, oh, that's, okay. that's, our, that's our website. And uh, we're, we're, we're working on a lot of social media outlets. We're, we've connected with West Valley Arts Council to make them aware of what we've got going Good. on. Um, Wham, um, uh, you know, we've had communications with uh, the Surprise Arts Commission as well. And so just a, a lot of word of mouth and, and we're doing a lot of, mar we did a lot of marketing uh, to kick things off and unfortunately it, it didn't uh, go the way we wanted it to, but uh, we're, we're confident we get calls every day uh, when, it, when, when, are, when are you bringing it back? Right. And um, 
people want that sense of normalcy. I think people are starving for yes. that theater experience and we want to make sure that we can do it in a safe manner so people are confident with that when they come to uh, the Vista that they're safe and that they're getting that entertainment value that they're paying for. Right, right. So John, what is the, the seating capacity is what? 1,300? 1,300. 1,300. So it's the largest venue in the West Valley, isn't it? It is, it is. And it, it's one of the largest in the state yes. um, it, as a performing arts center. Yes. Yeah. So when when you reopen, you'll have people sitting every third seat or... or we like follow state guidelines on that. So every other row is blocked um, and we are oh, okay. at 50% capacity right now. Um, um, the state's very... Uh, it, it's similar to the benchmarks for schools reopening and returning. Okay. Um, we follow a, a, a similar process for indoor theaters. And so um, right now we're, we're at a place where we can show... Um, at 50% capacity. Okay, super. Yeah, well, good. Is you know, I, I'm I'm so excited. I was so excited last year when you when you stood it up the first time, and 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 then COVID hit, and of course we all got disappointed. But this next year could really be really cool. We're we're excited. We're excited about the programming. We've got um, we've got a couple comedians coming. Bill Enville from Blue Collar Comedy oh, Tour yeah. uh, will be coming out. Uh, Jim Brewer, who had a ri was originally coming. Um, last spring has been rescheduled to come out in May. Good. Um, we've got uh, the Isaacs, which is a, a, a country. Um, they sing some gospel. They're actually coming to us with Terry Bradshaw. Oh, so really? Terry Bradshaw, <laughs> superstar quarterback, NFL anchor on Fox. Right. Soon oh. to be uh, reality TV superstar um, <laughs> is is coming to the Vista and surprise. And so, oh, and, and we've got a bunch of other shows that we're, we're excited about. And I think it hits on everything, family entertainment, um, we've got stuff for our adult population and, and, and we're excited on the different genres. That's great. Well, thanks, John. Thanks for, for what you're doing. And thanks to Dice Art School District for repositioning that Performing Arts Center, which is such a great asset that most people in Surprise don't even know exists, really. And once you get this thing going, they're going to they're gonna find out pretty quick. You're going to sell out. I appreciate the support. It's the vision of Dr. Kellis and our board and our, our cabinet that just kind of giving um, our, our team uh, just a lot of uh, opportunities to grow this thing and, and get it out to the community. That's so great. we're we're excited. We're excited. Are you thinking about doing a senior show? You going to star in it? We, well, we can I was do, thinking. Yeah. It, I was thinking about doing the hand jive. You know, I'm pretty. Yes. Good at that, you know. Yeah, that would sell. <laughs> that would sell. Yes, we could do that. We, yeah, let's work on that. Let's work on that. The mayor's hand jive. All right. Anyway. All right, John. Well, thank you very much. When we come back, we'll get an update on the good things happening at Westmec, our local career and technical school. Surprise has an extensive public art collection that can be viewed from the comfort of your own home. Our virtual public art tour showcases photos and descriptions of our city's art pieces. If you're looking for an excuse to get outside, use our online digital guide featuring the locations of our art pieces so you can visit and view them up close. Check out the Surprise Virtual Public Art Tour on our website, surpriseaz.gov slash public art. Welcome back. In November of 2017, new educational opportunities emerged in Surprise with the opening of Westmec Northwest Campus at Dysart Road and Grand Avenue. Please join me in welcoming Westmec Superintendent Greg Donovan. Greg, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. It's a pleasure to be here with you. You know, your, your school is such an asset to our community. It's just, uh, it's just we're all so enthusiastic about it. And uh, so what, it, you know, what programs, could you tell us what programs that are going on right now at your campus? Well, let's start with the overall piece. West okay. Mech currently offers 27 different pathways for students who are interested in pursuing a very specific career pathway at this time. Okay. But our, at our beautiful campus right here in Surprise, today we are offering automotive technology, power sports, that's the motorcycles and the razors right. and the off-road vehicles. We have veterinary assistant, dental assisting, law and public safety, IT security, physical therapy, cosmetology, medical assisting, biotechnology, and we have nursing on the books as our next program coming online, Super. and still have room to add a couple more. So specifically here in Surprise, 
Those are the opportunities we have at this time. Okay. As well as we have not started, but we do have adult programs at West Mech, and we hope within this school year, the 2021 school year, to begin to offer some adult opportunities on this campus oh, as well. I was gonna ask you about that. Are you totally built out on the, on the land right we now? We are built out. You're built out. Okay, it's just a matter of not all the buildings are, are, are teaching right now. There, there, there's well, no classrooms. Every in building right has something going on, but it does. not every okay. building is at absolute capacity. Okay. And that was planned as we built the buildings and okay. then uh, left room for additional programs and things by the desires of local industry and the desires of the local people and students. What is it they want? Okay. And gives us that flexibility to be nimble and bring in programs that are, again, wanted by local industry. Yeah. What are some of the employment needs? And as we know, with the huge amount of growth out here on the 303 and those things, there will be specific employment needs and training. Yes, there will be. And we're ready to answer to that. That's great. Your community may have noticed on the building closest to the north end, the Carl's Jr. Uh -huh. the hotel, there's actually a sign out there that says Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. Yeah, I saw that. We have a partnership on this campus with Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. That is their Western United States Technician Training Center. They bring okay. technicians in from the 14 Western United States and Western territories to receive update training for the dealerships in the 14 Western United States. Wow. So we are partnering with business and industry. Our students can go straight across the hall, if you will, and back and forth, we're partnering. Our students are doing internships in local dealerships, as well as connecting us to real business and industry. That's great, Greg. You know, you mentioned the adult certification programs. Can you tell us more about that or what can surprise residents? How can they know more about that? Well, they can go to the West Mech website, okay. westmech.org, and it, there's a whole section on adult and then ed. Just click on surprise. On adult ed. Yeah. No, they would click on adult education. Adult ed, okay. But our plan is those programs I mentioned, so let's just use medical assisting as an example. Okay that we would begin to offer adult sections of that. So adults in our community, which is anybody post high school, okay. they could be 19 years old, they could be 59 years old, right. who say, I wanna get my credential to become a medical assistant at the local doctor's office or hospital, can come in and go through that program and get their credential. Excellent, excellent. So what percentage of your students are from Surprise? We currently have about 660 students that come to that campus on a daily basis okay. of our high school enrollment. Okay. Of the 660, approximately 45% of those, 300 of them, okay. are from the Dysert High Schools. Okay. Then there are another large group that are coming from Millennium and some of those things that are right on the cuff of what I call South Surprise, right. that north end of the Agua Fria School District. Oh yeah. We have a few that come from like Liberty over in the Peoria District, but there are 660 students currently that come to this campus daily. We can grow that some more, and about 50, 45 to 50% 50 of those are coming from the Dysart High Schools. Okay. As another example, it certainly works well. We have about a dozen students that come down every day from Wickenburg High School. Okay, and so, Obviously, you do a lot of collaboration with the Dysart School District, the high schools. Great question, Mayor, thank <laughs> you. We are very connected to all of our member districts, but let's talk about Dysart for a moment. Within the Dysart system, the Dysart high schools, the four high schools, we actually support 33 career and technical programs at the four high schools. Oh. So combined, there's 33 programs. Okay. Each high school has some unique programs. We help support those. We support them financially. We support them instructionally. We support them with equipment. We help make sure they're meeting industry needs. And we are providing that financial support right back to the district through those programs. Excellent. So as an example, that represents almost about 2,800 students a day are touching some type of career and technical education program in the Dysart School District. So we're very much partners in education, very much interested in making sure students have access to career opportunities mm -hmm. and begin to think about what is my pathway? Right. So the term college and career ready is definitely on our mind and how we get people thinking because to pursue continuing education is important to be successful 
Today, you need a solid education, but you also need those skills that employer says, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Right. You need to be educated, but you have to have the right skills. skills. That's right. And when you put these two pieces together, we like to use the term, you're golden. We, we issued over 3,000 credentials last year to students that industry said, this is what we want to see, that they're ready to work. Wow. So as, that, as you just saw, many students earn more than one credential. Now, just out of curiosity, on the, the cosmetology part, or the, you have a hair salon in there. Correct. Right? So can, can residents come in and have their hair cut or whatever? Yes. Or how does that work? I hope they all know about that. <laughs> we are open to the public at, at particular days and particular times of the right. year because by rule, the State Board of Cosmetology requires all students to have an actual number of experiences, okay. live, real experiences. Okay. They have to actually clock a certain number of haircuts, a certain number of hair colors, a certain number of perms. I Those see. things have to be documented and shown. So we are open to the public. Oh, good. It is at a very steep discount, basically a cost recovery for supplies and those right. things. Right. I will say to the community, we'd love to have you. Please come. <laughs> Please make a part of it. But if typically you go to a dresser, a hairdresser, and they take an hour, plan on it being a couple of hours. Yeah. These students are learning. Right. The teacher has to come over and make sure they're doing it correctly and those kinds of things. Right. So it's a little slower process, yeah. but we would love to have them. Okay, good. In addition to that, Mayor, we hope someday, let me be clear, someday, we also hope to have a dental clinic on that campus. Oh, wow, okay. Same kind of thing. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Well, we're excited and we intend to continue to grow. As I've mentioned, I'd just like to re-emphasize, we will be adding some more programs. I very briefly mentioned Biotech, that's a growing program. Oh, yeah. And our next one, which we hope to partner with Ottawa University or the likes, we've had some discussion, is a nursing program. Okay. You know, huge demand in health careers, lots yes. of interest. Yes. So I wanna to say to the community, continue to look forward to new and bigger and better things. Continue to look forward that we have opportunities for adults or post high school graduation whatever word you want to use. Our goal is eventually that campus, the lights are on from early in the morning till late at night, and we're helping people prepare to be strong contributors and participants in their community. That's great. Thank you, Greg. Thank it's you been for a being pleasure. here. Thank and you for having us. Oh, absolutely. We're loud, we're proud, we love our yep. orange right there on Dysert <laughs> and Grand. Come by for a tour. Great, and we'll do, a, we'll do an update in the future too. Just Love to catch to. up with what you're doing. Because you have me anytime. You guys are on the move, you know. It's well, we great. appreciate all the cooperation and partnership with the City of Surprise. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Greg. Hey, in a moment, we'll talk to higher education at Ottawa University, Arizona, after this short break. So, we're driving to school, and all of a sudden, bam, a pothole. Either that to learn how to go around it, or download my Surprise app. On the app, you can request services. Just pick your location, select what you want to report, specimens, and bam, no more potholes. Download My Surprise app today. Can you please give me my phone back? Not while you're driving, Dad. It's now time to turn our focus toward higher education. Joining the conversation is Dr. Dennis Tyner, president of Ottawa University, Arizona. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you, delighted to be here, Mayor. You know, you have been through a lot of changes at your campus, from building to athletic programs to, I mean, it's just been one thing after another, and then COVID hit. Correct. And you've had to adjust to that big time. And so how, how is it going, or how, how has the enrollment been? Have you had an increase in enrollment? And we believe it or not, we've had an increase in enrollment this year. Really? I think that's... I don't want to call it staggering, but it certainly yeah. is exceptional for us to show an increase in enrollment during a very challenging time okay. to go through the enrollment processes that schools normally follow. For example, lots of high schools were shut down. Normally there are high school visits, there are rec recruiting events, and none of those things were occurring from 
I don't know, approximately March through the end of the recruiting season. Right. So for us to have success with regard to that challenge and then the challenge of students deciding whether or not they wanted to pursue higher education or take what a lot of people were calling a gap year. Did they want to take a year off? Should I, should I pursue higher education right now? Because I don't want to, I really don't want my higher education experience to be compromised. I, I want to experience what college is really like. Right. So there are a lot of challenges that, that higher education is facing right now for students coming out of high school. So. To have an increase in enrollment, I, I think our enrollment team did a phenomenal job. Our enrollment team consists of the people who work for the, uh, the admissions department and then anybody else who's recruiting for particular activities, particularly the athletic department. Yep. And speaking of athletic, what's going on with your athletic programs? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of dust gathering on the, on the courts and what have you. They're practicing. The, the teams are practicing. Currently in this fall semester, uh, we have cross country is in season and we have our our golf team that is playing games in season, but everybody else is just practicing and their seasons have been postponed until the spring semester. So when spring kicks up, we're gonna have a lot of our teams playing. So we're gonna have fall, uh, fall football transitioned to the spring. Really, we'll okay. Be football in the spring semester. So it'd be like April? March, I bet we April. start probably, I haven't seen a start date yet, but we'll probably start our conference play in either late January or early February. It's what I'm anticipating. Okay. And then the playoffs will be in, in May. I think the championship game is, in, is okay. in early May. Good. Okay. Well, that'll give us something to look forward to because uh, the, the regular college season will be over, NFL will be over, <laughs> so we can watch Ottawa. That's right. We'll have football all year round. Yeah. Right? That's good. That's great. So, um, is, is Ottawa going to increase courses to include additional degree programs, or where are you on that, Dennis? I think every institution of higher education is always looking at what are the trends, what do we see happening in the future, and we're no different. We're, we're looking at what the trend lines look like, where the demands are, are things particular to this area, right? For example, are we finding that there are areas in the higher education that are important here, but they may not be where some of our other campuses are? Mm -hmm. I would tell you that I personally have been involved in conversations with some of your people at the City Surprise, Samantha Pinkle and Mike Hoover, and I've had conversations and we've pulled in a couple of other people at the institution to have conversations with regard to construction management. We think that that's a... Ooh. Well, we think that that can be a hot area oh, yeah. for around here, especially with all the construction that's yes. taking place. Uh, just a couple of days ago, I was speaking with one of our faculty members who thinks that uh, that there's certainly some great possibilities with criminal justice and a criminal justice program. Okay. We haven't had criminal justice. The institution that I came from, that was the largest program there. And with a lot of the programs that you see on TV right. that pertain to criminal justice, right. there's a lot of demand with the younger people, the younger generation okay. with regard to that. So we're always looking for, you know, where's the interest? Where's the demand? Right. And a lot of, a lot of things have to be in place. It's not just pick and choose. Uh, here's a major. Let's try that one. We yeah. want to make sure it's right for us. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, we as a city couldn't ask for a better partner than Ottawa. I mean, well, that's a mutual statement. Okay. I mean, it is, uh, we just love what you do, Dennis, and we love your students. We love your coaches and teachers. It's just a fabulous organization. Um, what is, what are some of the things the students get involved in in the community? I don't think surprise residents really understand everything that the students do. That's, you, that's true. They, could you they elaborate don't. on that a little sure. bit? Sure, because a lot of that happens behind the scenes, and it's, you know, we're not trying to boast about what it is that we do there. Even the younger students from the high school are part of what takes place in, in the community, and, and things go unnoticed, but they are involved in so many different things. I, I will tell you, a large number of programs that are happening with the city come from our athletic department, because teams feel that it's part of so there, there's something important in the NAIA that's the uh, the league uh, that we play in, uh -huh. in in terms of athletics and they have this program called the champions of character program and in a nutshell champions of character it's important to be more than just an athlete it's about it's about your character it's about giving back to the community and things of that nature and so we have a lot of our teams they take it upon themselves to do events within the community um, to assist with growing their people to become champions of character. I see. And so I'm sure you've heard of some of these things. You know, our football team has been picking oranges, I think, every year right. since we've been here. Right. Right. And, and uh, we've had a number of our teams have been doing clinics for the youths. Uh, they've been serving as referees. They've been serving as coaches. Uh -huh. uh, they've been doing some of that with, even with CCV. Uh, we've been helping and assisting with, our, with the rec department here. Uh, right. we've, we've been doing some, some clinics with uh, the tennis center. 
Uh, they've been doing some fundraising events uh, that, uh, that have been happening locally. They've been part of the Ronald McDonald uh, home. Uh, I mean, off the top of my head, there's a handful of the events that I can think of. Uh, working with the Junior Golf Association and helping the oh, youth good. be interested in golf. As you probably know, the, you don't find a lot of young, young people who are playing golf. I know. Well, who's helping them understand that there's an opportunity for them to do that? Who's helping them understand that there's a love and a passion for this sport with other younger people? Right. Like college-age students. That's great. That's great, Dennis. So, you know, finally, this is your third year. In surprise. Fourth year. Just Closing, completed your yeah. third year. Going into your fourth. Yeah. Finishing my fourth year. I, I moved here in January 20, 2017. So what is what does the what does surprise mean to you? And you know, can wow. you elaborate on that a little uh, bit? I, yeah, I can absolutely elaborate. So first of all, it's it's our home. Surprise to me and to my wife, it's it's our home. This is where we reside. Uh, we made a commitment when we came out here. Uh, when we were coming to work for Ottawa University, uh, we knew what this meant to the City of Surprise, and my wife and I committed to living in Surprise. We wanted it to be our home. We wanted to right. show the City of Surprise that we were committed to the City of Surprise. Uh, and it's, inter it's important and interesting that uh, a number of our employees actually reside in Surprise as well. Uh, we love the city. We love the city and what it stands for. It's progressive. It's forward-thinking. It's clean. It's safe. Uh, people here care about other people in the community. Uh, right. we, I love to think about the, the events that take place, right? The Easter egg hunt. I, I love the 4th of July. Best fireworks <laughs> display I've seen anywhere. Right. And I look at all of the people in the community that come out for that. And that, it, to me, it talks about surprise and what surprise wants to do for the members of the community. Yeah. So it's, it's home, right? It's, it's like a family. Yeah. Surprise is like a family. Well, that's great, Dennis. Well, you're a big part of our family, buddy. And we appreciate everything you're doing. And uh, the future, I think I'm going to have to start wearing dark glasses because the future looks so bright for Ottawa, you know? The future is bright. We've got, um, I think we've got a, a lot of building to do still. We, uh, you know, our, our population of students right now is about 850 students. You will probably, probably remember in our first year, we opened our doors with 434. Right. So we've about doubled that number in basically in three short years. Uh, but our aspirations are higher than that. We believe that the demand in the, in the West Valley and in the state of Arizona is there to, uh, uh, to bring a, a larger number of students to, to our school. We believe we have what a lot of, uh, a lot of families and a lot of students are looking for. Yep. Private education, an opportunity for more individualized attention. Right. No disrespect to other schools that are, that are out here in Arizona, but every school has their unique thing that, yeah, right, that, exactly. that some people are looking for. And, and we think we've got a, a great product and a great opportunity for students, students who want to play a sport and they're, they're not competitive at the Division I level, still an opportunity for them to continue their athletic careers at the collegiate level, coming to a school like ours. And what we want to do is we, we want to develop future leaders of America. I know every school says that. We're serious about that. We want to develop people who are ready for the workforce, ready for the world, ready to hit the world with their education and, and beyond. Going to college is not just about gaining an education and an academic discipline. It's, it's about becoming more worldly. It's become, becoming a, a person who understands who they are and, and what they want to accomplish in the world. Right. And it's, you know, lots of people talk about, you know, you're going to go out of, you're going to go leave college and you're going you're gonna to knock this world over. And we're, we're serious about that. We're looking to develop people who are serious about the world. This is, we're living in a very interesting time. We are. In, in this country. Right. And this country needs great leaders it more really than ever. It really does. Right, more than ever. More than ever, Dennis. So things that you're doing is the, the leadership right. of the City of Surprise, it's important. We have to establish what, what is this country about and, and who are we? And we want our students and guess to be what? the next leader. There's going to be some adversity. That, hey. that, <laughs> people think different. You better understand that. You should know why. Right. And you should know how to communicate with them effectively yes. to answer questions. I don't want to take cheap shots at what we saw in our presidential debate the other night. But to me, no. that's not what we're training our students to do. Right. And in fact, I had a conversation with an employee yesterday. They said, you know what we should do? We should take that video and use that with our students to talk about, you want to be a leader? Let's talk about this. Let's look at it and let's talk about what leadership is and what leadership is not. Yeah. Well, very good, Dennis. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for taking your time today always. to share about Ottawa to our yeah. residents. Well, we're always happy to talk about Ottawa University. We're delighted in, in 
particularly pleased with our relationship with the city and the West Valley. Uh, the city's important to us, yeah. uh, and we think that the, the institution has a lot to offer to the city and to the residents of the city. We agree. We agree. Again, Dennis Tyner with Ottawa University spent some time with us today. I hope you learned some things. We had Dysart School District here also. We had West, West Mac here. So it's been kind of an education symposium, so to speak. So if you have questions or comments for me, I would love to hear from you. You can call or email me anytime, and I welcome you to sign up for my newsletter, which is filled with the latest city news and information. Just click on the Notify Me button on the website to sign up. Thanks for watching.